Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing uh, Kiss and Run Fusion. Okay, so now I want to talk about another experiment you can do which uh, confirms or or is a nice argument in favour at least of uh, Kiss and Run Fusion. Now this was done by uh, a scientist known as Chen. Uh, however, this is not Roger Chen, not the person who won the Nobel Prize for um, Führer 2, I believe it was. Uh, this is another Chen. Okay, so this guy Chen, what he did was he decided to uh, use the die FM143, okay, uh, which is a die uh, which binds to um, membranes, basically. It binds to plasma membranes, and it's FM143. I've just realized that that looks like FML43. FM143, okay. Um, so FM143, the I idea is very, very similar to what we did uh, with Stevens, where we used the synaptic fluorin. The difference this time is that this is actually going to bind to the membrane. So, the idea is basically that you can get your synaptic vesicle here, uh, sorry, you can get your axon terminal here. You can uh, cover it in FM143. So in will come the dye, FM143, okay? So it's going to bind all over the place, basically. It's going to bind to the plasma membrane of the axon terminal. So here in pink is the FM143 binding to the axon terminal, uh, uh, plasma membrane of the axon terminal. Now, what's going to happen is that the axon terminal, when it's fused vesicles with the plasma membrane, it has to recapture this membrane. So continuously in the axon terminal, what is happening is a process of endocytosis. So you are continuously invaginating membrane inwards and pinching it off to form endosomes, which are then going to be recycled and turned back into synaptic vesicles. So the idea is, is that if this axon terminal is coated in FM143, then when these synaptic vesicles are re-endocytosed, they will also end up filled with this FM143. So you're going to get vesicles which are dyed with this FM143, basically. Okay, now the idea is that you can use total internal reflection uh, fluorescence microscopy to visualize these, um, these dyed synaptic vesicles. So what you will do is you'll put your axon terminal in a bath containing FM143. Then you'll let it make some synaptic vesicles which are filled uh, with this FM143. Then what you will do is you will remove it from the bath with the FM143. So you'll remove all the FM143 that's bound to the extracellular membrane here, sorry, to the plasma membrane. And now all that will remain is the FM143 that is within the synaptic vesicles. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy again. So here is our glass plate, okay, here. And then sitting on our glass plate is this synaptic vesicle, uh, sorry, uh, axon terminal, uh, which has synaptic vesicles filled with this FM143 in it. So here are our synaptic vesicles and they are filled up with this FM143 in pink here. Okay, right. Now, what we can do is we can visualize that FM143, and by the way, I've drawn it in pink. I don't actually know what color FM143 radiates back at you. Um, but the point is that it's a fluorophore. So just to explain the basic principle of a fluorophore, I know I've already done this in this video, but I'll do it again. A fluorophore is a molecule which is capable of um, taking in an electromagnetic uh, photon of a certain frequency, the excitation frequency, and then re-emitting the energy that it gets from absorbing that at a different frequency known as the emission frequency, which will be lower than the excitation frequency because uh, the energy of the photon is proportional to its frequency. It's actually Planck's constant times the frequency. E is Planck's constant times the frequency, okay? So, if you have a higher frequency, you have a higher energy. You cannot get a photon coming out with a higher frequency than the one you put in, because that would mean it had a higher energy. So you're always going to have a lower energy, basically, than the one you gave in. Okay, so, um, 
that is the principle of fluorescence, that you can shine one, um, a photon of a certain frequency in and get a photon of a different frequency out. Okay, right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do total internal reflection of fluorescence microscopy. So we're going to fire photons in again. They'll be totally internally reflected back off, and you get this some energy radiating in to your sample, basically, in this evanescent wave where energy basically goes in for about 300 nanometers into your sample, basically. Okay, so this is the evanescent wave here. Okay, and that stretches for 300 nanometers and just gets this first little tip of the axon terminal. Now, uh, the energy of this evanescent wave here, so this is the evanescent wave, um, some of that energy will be absorbed by this FM143 uh, fluorophore, okay? So it will be excited to a higher energy state, and then it will re-emit that energy at its emission frequency. So you'll get this light coming off your sample, which is the emission light, basically. Okay, and then what you will do is you'll put a camera somewhere to connect, collect this light. Okay, so here's our camera collecting the light. And you'll get a picture of your uh, axon terminal. Well, you'll get a picture of this slice of the axon terminal. Okay, so let me show this up. Right, so what you'll get then is if we have the glass plate here, Then you'll have the axon terminal on here. And then you'll have these synaptic vesicles again glowing whatever colour they glow back at you because they've got the FM143 dye in. Okay, so we've demonstrated FM143 in pink, so we might as well stick to that. I don't know what colour FM143 actually flashes back at you, but it will be some frequency that you can detect. Okay, now... What happens then if you actually stimulate the neuron whilst doing this? This at the moment was a static, unexcited neuron that wasn't releasing its neurotransmitter. What will happen if um, you actually um, do fuse these vesicles with the plasma membrane? Well, what's going to happen is if we excite our neuron, here is our synaptic vesicle at the moment. Now, if it um, is if the neuron becomes excited, we know what happens is that a small fusion pore opens temporarily, and then this can either move on to full vesicle fusion, like so, okay? And if that happens, if full fusion happens, what would you expect to see? Well, at the moment, this, these pink dots we are seeing represents this entire surface area of the synaptic vesicle. And that's curved round in this sphere, okay? So when we flatten all of that membrane out into, a, into the plasma membrane, it's going to have a greater surface area uh, than the diameter of this sphere, basically. So what I'm saying is, if you imagine taking a, um, let's say, a tennis ball, and actually flattening out all of that uh, surface area of the tennis ball, so you cut up the tennis ball, so if this is the tennis ball, if you cut up the tennis ball and then lay all of the tennis ball material flat, then the actual area of that will be bigger than if you just see a 2D slice of the tennis ball, which is what we're seeing. We're seeing a 2D slice of the, um, of the synaptic uh, vesicle. We're just seeing it from one aspect. We're not seeing its entire surface area. Now, if it's flattened against the... Um, plasma membrane, we will see its actual entire surface area. So we should see the pink dot go up, basically. It will become bigger because when it fuses, all of the surface area will now be flat. So we'll see the entire flat surface area, which will be bigger than this just uh, 2D um, view that we had of the synaptic vesicle, which was a curved sphere prior. Okay, so that's what we'll see if the vesicle actually fuses. We'll see it get We'll get see the pink, uh, the pink dot get bigger effectively. Now, what will happen if kiss and re kiss and run fusion is seen? So this is full fusion that we've discussed now. If we get kiss and run fusion instead, what we should see is the fusion pore closing back up. Okay. Now, um, however, we won't see it disappear in the way that we saw it disappear in Stevens' assay. 
in, because the four four is still active even once it's closed back up. However, remember what I told you. When the fusion pore forms, a little bit of the lipid from um, a little bit of the lipid from the synaptic vesicle will go into the plasma membrane and. Basically, what we might be able to see is the tiny bit of synaptic vesicle membrane uh, which has gone into the plasma membrane, okay? And also what you might see is the synaptic vesicle itself might shrink a little bit because of the plasma membrane which has gone into the synaptic vesicle. So indeed, what you can actually detect is this little movement of the... Um, membrane that's in the synaptic vesicle going into the plasma membrane basically okay so you might want to take a s different slice to see that you might want to take a slice where you just see the plasma membrane and not the synaptic vesicles behind so that you can just see the little bit of pink membrane now appearing in the plasma membrane of the axon terminal and basically you can see this little bit of plasma membrane coming from the synaptic vesicle into the plasma membrane, which we believe is the bit of the synaptic vesicle that has joined the plasma membrane in a kiss and run fusion event, basically, where a vesicle has kissed the plasma membrane, giving it a little bit of membrane, and uh, then run off again. Okay, so that's a second experiment backing up the kiss and run fusion.